Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on a Tuesday here, 27 August. Headline driven markets. There's no real point in talking positioning, and we don't want to spend too much time talking directionally because this market since Friday or really for the past quarter I would say has been uh, headline driven whether it pisses you off or not the Trump uh, and G are uh, driving the bus here it's not Powell it's not uh, Debeal from Australia RBA guy um, it's not Corota from the BOJ or anything it's a uh, bunch of politicians driving the uh, trading bus here trade risk on you gotta be quick pay the offer or cover your risk trade risk off China fight on you gotta you know smash left hand side equities dollar yen whatever you're most comfortable with um, it's as simple as that I mean yesterday was a clear uh, risk off day Trump came on made his uh, made his little tweets and boom we're all scrambling uh, covering turning from short to long and then waiting and then seeing that some of the tweets were lies and then going from long to short uh, just purely on the news so it's a funny market um, but it is what it is there's no sense trying to um, to fight it have your news feeds up and be nimble. Can't marry anything in this because the people who are giving the news um, seem to be somewhat hysterical. They change their mind uh, day to day. You know, obviously on Friday Trump was saying that China is the enemy, biggest enemy ever. Blah blah blah. And then uh, on Monday at the G7, China is our friend. I was just on the phone with uh, the. Chinese premier, which turns out to be a lie anyway, you get the gist of this. Um, so have your news feeds on and trade the news uh, if you're going to trade because there's no other rhyme or reason to this uh, except for news. I think the overall backdrop for risk is, is negative over and beyond uh, this trade war, but when you're getting 90 handle moves up and 90 handle moves down based on Twitter comments. You better just dial in and, and watch Twitter. Uh, your Bloomberg feeds, your MNI feeds, your Reuters feeds, uh, whatever news aggregating service that you use. Uh, and if you're retail out there listening to this and you're using Yahoo Finance or or I don't know what you might be using. Um, I would just not trade for a little bit because it, unless you have a news feed, you're really at a disadvantage here. Um, again, because this is just a news-driven market. I will talk about three levels that are important um, that I think you could make money short-term trading around these levels when they arrive uh, within the scope of news. The first one is Aussie. Debut was uh, negative on on yaws. He just spoke, um, so we went from 72 down to 58 here. Uh, but we had a pretty positive day yesterday, as you can imagine, with all the risk on. Aussie almost fully bullish engulfed with the candle, but the high was through. Um, through the figure and through 20 now, for whatever reason. Um, can pay and if you're just going to purely break trade this you actually don't need the, to follow the news you just need to see when you get filled has there been news uh, so this is one way if you don't have a news feed or if you're too old to be reading news all day and just clicking on news um, this is one way you might be able to make some dough so you just sort of leave it a one stop and leave a 21 stop 
and as you get filled, you're like, oh, I bought, uh, I don't know, I bought five at 01. Um, what's happening? Where's the yes? Where's dollar yen? Has there been news? If there has, uh, you have the security of, of that going with you. And if there hasn't, if it looks like they're just jamming it, just get out of it. No, no tears. But this is a key, key level. We've been talking about it for a while. Um, we snuck up on it yesterday, the high 88. We're at 60 now after some negative comments from Debil. But something to keep in mind. 68 the figure, and then more importantly, 68.20. Let's go ahead to uh, the cousin of Aussie, dollar CAD. This is now a percent away, so not really in play, but um, massive resistance up there, 133.40. We really should have went, gone through that on Friday as equities collapsed. Um, and oil was collapsing, but didn't happen. But what this means is the next time we do see this, uh, whether it's tomorrow or in two weeks or in two months, this is a hugely important level, 133.40. So this is kind of a good little risk-off level, right? So the Aussie is a risk-on level. This is a risk-off level. Both, um, both of these levels, there's money to be made at least around the short term, right? So you can even just duck and dive around these levels. It would only, it should be, you should be able to make your money within the hour, uh, and then you can get square again um, to avoid the um, the news bombs. Because that's the one way to avoid news bombs is to be square, right? One last chart. We have um, a speaker today from the Norges Bank. Um, 990, very, very important here on the downside, a percent away, and 1010, both, both of them. There'll be loads of stops above 1010 because this is a this is a consensus core short here. Um, and core short is the correct way of doing this. But there will be stops above 1010. And then once you get through 1010, you can easily see 1020 because um, there will be a lot of stops up there. This is uh, a lot of my friends have this little pet trade on short Euro Norway. A lot of guys, uh, myself included, who have been on and off short Euro Norway who never really trade Euro Norway. Uh, that's always a sign that might not be the best idea when you see uh, tourists come into a currency pair guys who don't trade it often and think they're going to you know get some sort of free ride on the Norway express but be that what it may 990 1010 keep your eye on both let's go to oil up to 55 5530 yesterday did not like it up there really hard to be short this yesterday but if you did manage it um, this looks quite interesting it looks like it's going to go to 50 bucks uh, eventually around the chop um, core short and oil we like uh, today maybe between 54.40 and 54.90 um, because even with that positive trade news we couldn't make a new high there so Keep an eye on oil, core short. Equities, just a Trump trade. You can see now, technically, we're just in the middle of nowhere. There's not much to do. Um, you know, there's no reason we can't test 29.30. That we might be able to sneak above 29.40. There's also no reason that we could just collapse through 28.10 through the 200 day, which is at 28.05. This could go either way. Uh, you're literally one comment away from this going either way. So if you're going to trade S&Ps, uh, have your news feed up and see how that goes. 
Bonds actually didn't do a lot yesterday. They kind of came off their highs, but then just kind of sat there. Um, yield on the 30 is right around 2. The real yield on the 10 is 152.5. A red, a red candle, no doubt, from the highs. Uh, so you want to keep an eye on this low here, 130.25. But certainly no, no point in trying to call a turn here. If it does turn, it's just pure luck. Uh, trend still looks higher. There's no no signal here at all that there's been change in trend. All right, listen, I've said enough. Uh, those three levels, Aussie, Dollar CAD, Euro Norway, are worth watching. And uh, just watch your news feeds, people. Uh, and you're trading in five-minute increments now. See news, trade, collect money. See news, trade, collect money. Uh, and if you can't do that, then don't trade. Uh, wait for things to settle down. Wait for uh, Donnie Boy to shut the fuck up. Good stuff. Good luck out there, people. I will uh, talk to you all tomorrow.